close. <laughs> My name is Rich Angel. Angel. Yes. Pronounced angel, old English spelling. Two L's. Okay. I'd like to address a few things that were brought up. We learned from the Declaration of Independence that our rights are endowed by our Creator. They're not given or taken away by government. They may be respected or violated by government, but they come from our Creator. And we also learn from the Declaration of Independence that governments are instituted among men to secure these rights. Once the government enacts and enforces laws that are supposedly designed to protect us from ourselves, tyranny has already commenced. And now it's just a matter of degrees. I've heard it said that there are certain laws where someone like me might say there's no victim, but that in fact society is a victim. Well, I contend that society is a fictitious <coughs> construct. It doesn't exist, and if I'm wrong, if it does exist, then it certainly should be put on the stand to testify against the defendant. I've heard it said that drug laws, that if this were to pass, then all of a sudden there would be a huge problem because now all of a sudden you've got unenforceable drug laws. I'd like to remind you at this point that prohibition never has worked and never will work. We learned in grade school that prohibition was a huge mistake. And yet here we are, just a few generations later, with prohibition fictitiously or erroneously called a war on drugs, which is really a war on people and which kills far more people than drugs themselves. If somebody is driving on the road in a reckless manner, whether it be because they've been drinking or otherwise, that is a threat. That person is endangering other people on the road. And I don't think anybody here would excuse that kind of behavior. But since it was brought up, let's talk about another kind of another way that drinking laws are enforced where there is no victim and no potential victim. If somebody walks out of a bar intoxicated in the middle of the night too cold to to sit in the car and too intoxicated to drive that person could be arrested for simply turning on the motor to start the heat to sit and wait for sobering up. A person traveling down the road who realizes, uh-oh, I shouldn't have gotten on the road, I've been drinking too much, pulls over to take a nap, can be arrested for drunk driving. That's an example of a victimless crime being enforced. In any case, the chaos that is been fed to us by all the bureaucrats and law enforcement representatives who are against this law. I cannot tell a lie. I have completely lost my train of thought. Do you know what happens to the phone? I know it does. I have a question for you. Please that ask. Home. Yes. The gentleman that was driving felt that he should pull over. Right. If he took his keys out of the ignition, would he still be charged with drunk driving? 
He took his, he's out of the ignition. Throw him on the floor of the dock. It's been known to happen. People have been known to go to prison for pulling over, knowing that they're too drunk. These, these kind of things that ha happen. And what I was starting to say, got my train of thought back, is that this law is not, to, is not designed to throw every little victimless crime out the window. It's designed to offer an affirmative defense. It's, in other words, it's reminding the jurors of their right to judge the law as well as the facts and controversy. Is there a victim? Was somebody endangered? <coughs> Etc. And I think that these bureaucrats and law enforcement agents who are coming in here to, to dissuade you from passing such a law, I think they're protecting their careers more than anything. And they're not trusting the people. They're telling us that they're smarter than we are and they know better than we do about who should or shouldn't be prosecuted and not end up being another statistic. That being that America has more prisoners than any other country in the world. No, but I'm sure if you do, if you go online and do a YouTube search, you'll get my testimony. Okay. I don't do that. All right. <laughs> okay. Are there any other questions? Thank you very much. Well, thank you for your time.